had more of your smile. What if the Welcome to this week's how-to video and I'm sharing with you what I'm cooking for my husband for Valentine's Day. So we don't go out for a meal on Valentine's Day itself, I cook something at home and Sai always requests what we're going to have. Well I ask him and say darling what would you like and I cook something that he would specifically like. So today he has requested that he has beef with chips and salad with a Bernays sauce. So that is what we are going to be cooking. There are little dogs tinkering around. So <laughs> we just have to bear with, I'm sorry. Now, I thought that, um, I've been thinking about this, not all of you have access to a great butcher and I'm always talking about my wonderful butcher. He is super, super duper. So I wanted to share with you an online butcher called Piper's Farm and they are excellent. If you don't have a good butcher locally to you, then I can highly recommend Piper's Farm. They have a cookbook, which actually Sai bought me for Christmas and it has some wonderful recipes in it. But what also is great about Piper's, if you order something from them, it comes with cooking instructions too on, on, on the, their website. So you can just click on, the item that you have chosen and then it will tell you exactly step by step how to cook it which is absolutely excellent so i have ordered my meat today from piper's farm and i'm going to get it out and show you exactly what we're going to be cooking so here is my box that has arrived from piper's farm and in here is the meat so let's Let's have a look at what we have got. Now, thoughtful packaging, which is very, very important. And it has got an ice pack. And actually, you can keep these ice packs and reuse them, which is excellent. And then our meat is here. So I have ordered a piece of beef. Chateaubriand is cut, 100% grass fed beef. Suitable for freezing, once opened, used within three days and it has got the weight of the meat on there as well and the date. So um, best before date. So thoughtful packaging. Please compost me. We are committed to sustainable packaging. This packaging has been specifically designed to be part of a circular economy. Please compost it after use. So that is excellent. Um, I am all for that. So we've got our meat here, but I'm going to get going with the chips first. I'm actually going to put this straight. Now this actually arrived yesterday and this is still frozen. So that um, packaging is really, really good at insulating. I'm going to pop this straight in the freezer and get the, the oven chips out. I've got a large argar pan on the hot ring of my argar and I'm just going to add some rapeseed oil in and heat that up first for my chips. I'm going to add in my oven french fries. Be careful of hot oil splashing. A couple of good pinches of sea salt. in the middle of my arbor to cook. Now you might say, Charlie, why aren't you making your own, your own chips? Because Sai really likes skinny fries and um, actually it's just easy to use the oven ready ones. Now this is the way he likes his, his French fries cooked. We've perfected it over the years. There is um, a YouTube video of me and him cooking steak and chips together, or well, really him cooking the steak and chips. And um, he shares exactly his, his take on things, which is quite funny. So I'll link that down below if you want to take a look at that. And then with these, I just put, keep them to 
hand in this drawer. I just pop one of these on and back in the freezer for next time. I've just washed my salad leaves and actually my salad strainer has um, died. It is broken. I need to replace it and I haven't done so because it's winter and we're not eating many salads. I'll just put that to one side. So actually, if you don't have a salad strainer and um, spinner, you can just use a tea towel. So I've just washed my lettuce in cold water, given it a good rinse, and then just dry it in a clean tea towel. And I find that works very well. So I'll just, oh, the leaves going everywhere. Just give those a little bit of a dry and pop them into my salad bowl that I have got here. I've just chopped some sugar snaps, some um, spring onions and some cucumber. We're just having a green salad so that is ready and I'll just make a simple dressing uh, which I'll share with you to go on top of that. So I'll pop that in the fridge until we are ready to eat it. For my salad dressing, I am going to just put some olive oil. I do this by eye, so um, just sort of have to guess. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Some really good quality white wine vinegar. This is actually from the fish restaurant Seahorse down in Dartmouth. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Um, so I was going to get that. Um, a couple of teaspoons of white wine vinegar. Then half a teaspoon of English mustard, half a teaspoon of honey, and a pinch of sea salt and I'm going to put the lid on and give that a shake. Pretty simple and easy. You can make a bigger quantity and it will keep in the fridge for a little while. Oh, I forgot to squeeze of lemon juice too. I've got my lemons here ready. There we are. Always a good idea to have a little taste test. So I shall just mix the honey in a little bit more have a little taste. Mm -hmm. Yummy. That honey is so good. It came in a Christmas hamper from Fortnum's and it's absolutely delicious. Now the great thing about Piper's Farm meat is because it comes fresh you can freeze it so if they have a special offer or something you can um, you know stock up, pop things in your freezer and know that they haven't been pre-frozen. So let's just unwrap this. Now, it's important that you take your meat out of the fridge um, about 15 minutes before you're planning to cook with it because you don't want to cook it, uh, cook with it straight from the fridge. So I'm just gonna pop that onto my chopping board there. And then using a bit of kitchen roll, you want to just dry the joint. So just dab it all over, turn it over and just dry it thoroughly. delicious piece of meat and Lola's ears <laughs> have pricked up. Um, she doesn't miss a trick. Now I'm going to season it with black pepper and sea salt and I am following Piper's, Piper's Farm's cooking instructions for this. So this is exactly what they say to do and then we'll just Turn it over and season this side. Like so. 
I'm just on Piper's Farm and you can see, look, I'll show you. So you can get um, product details there, um, ingredients, no thanks. <laughs> and then the cooking instructions. So it's really, really easy. And it says, take a hot cast iron pan without adding any oil and place the steak in the center of the pan. Cook for one to two minutes on each side on a high heat to brown and then turn down the heat. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, yeah. Right, I have got my smaller Le Creuset out and we are gonna use that. I'm going to heat it up on the hot side of my agar. I'm just gonna leave it there for a few minutes until it gets really hot before I start doing the beef. And I'm just going to follow Piper's Farm's instructions to the tea. The pan is heating up. Um, I think it's ready. It's been on there for a moment. It's feeling hot. So I'm just going to, using my tongs, sear the meat for one to two minutes on each side, including the ends. So you know, just keep an eye on the time. I find when you're cooking beef, it's important not to keep turning it, so make sure it has, you know, like one minute, 30 seconds on each side, rather than turning it um, lots and it not, not it, does that make sense? Like you don't want to be turning it every 10 seconds. Just want to leave it, do its thing. Keep an eye on the time. I've got a timer on my camera, so that's quite helpful. I can see how long it's been going for. So it's time to turn it. And if it does stick slightly to begin with, just pop, push it out with a wooden spatula and then turn it onto that other side. And again, keeping a note of the time and then you need to remember to do the ends and the sides Ooh. so to sear the ends you might just need to hold it up now i have seared it on every side so the, the bigger fat parts, the ends, and then the sides. And it says to reduce the temperature and then cook for the remaining cooking time, which is 10 to 15 minutes. Si and I like our beef quite rare. So I am going to cook it in total for about 10 minutes. And then the really important part is the rest time. The chips are coming on nicely. Make sure that you turn them frequently. I've got a meat thermometer and I'm just going to check. You don't want you want to put it into the middle of the meat and check the temperature. And this is in Fahrenheit and we're in Celsius, which is a little bit confusing. So I'll just convert that, but actually I'm happy with how that is cooked. So I'm going to take it off the heat now. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to place my meat to rest on a chopping board and just cover it loosely with some tin foil. Just loosely cover it. I'm not going to wrap it up like a parcel and I'm just going to leave it there to rest for 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, I'm going to make the Bernays sauce. It's not always easy to find um, tarragon vinegar. So I'm just going to share with you what to do if you don't have any. Um, one and a half tablespoons of white wine vinegar. one and a half tablespoons of white wine. Dry white wine is better than a fruity one. In that goes. Then a finely chopped shallot. In that goes. This is something that you could do in advance um, and just leave it to one side. And then I've got some tarragon 
from um, the green greengrocers and some black pepper. And I'm just going to, on a medium to low heat, just let that simmer for a couple of minutes. And that will infuse the vinegar for us. And now, while that's simmering, going to just weigh out 225 grams of unsalted butter. And actually, I'm just going to chop it up because it will melt quicker that way. And you can do this in the microwave, but I am using this little pan. Um, it's also got the funnel part, which will be helpful. You'll see why later. nearly all the butter. You do need to be quite precise when you're making bernets. So I'm just going to put that to melt. Currently on the back of my alga. This is simmering nicely. Actually, I can move that to one side and put my butter on the same ring. That's the great thing about the alga. The smell of tarragon is amazing. So that has just been simmering away and I'm just going to pop it into a sieve because I don't want the schlots and tarragon. I just want the infused vinegar and white wine, which will drip down into there. And I'm just gonna leave that to one side for a moment while the butter is melting. And I'm going to chop the tarragon leaves. So about one and a half tablespoons of tarragon leaves and without the stalky bits so just break the leaves off. I've just placed my chopping board on a tea towel and then it won't rock around and just finely slice your tarragon leaves. I'm using my Maggi mix for this with the small bowl and the little blade, but you could use a stick, um, Kenwood tri-blade or something similar. It just is personal preference. So I want three egg yolks and with the whites, I think I might make some meringues. So just crack your eggs. I just find it easier just to um, move it from side to side to separate them. And it's beginning to crack into my bowl. That yolk goes and same with the three eggs. Now my butter is totally melted and can you see on the top there is the white and that is when the butter separates and I'm just going to take that off because actually we don't want that for our bernet so just scrape that off as best you possibly can and then we want to weigh and make sure that we've got 175 grams. I will leave the recipe link down below for you. 175 grams of melted butter. So I'm just going to weigh that here. I'm kind of running out of space. Um, that is just over. So actually what we're going to do, because actually I want to use this, I'm going to pour it back in and just make sure I've got the 175. There. Spot on. Let's get those out of the way. Right, I'm going to put that back on just to keep warm. So I've got my eggs in there. I'm going to add some sea salt 
couple of pinch, well, a, a good pinch of sea salt. And then my vinegar that has cooled in there. I'm gonna add that in to my eggs, like so. Okay, we are ready to get going. So I'm just gonna turn this on and just blend this. I've got my butter, which is nice and warm. I'm gonna take this off. Now you want to add this in slowly it should take approximately one minute to add all the butter in. You want this blade constantly whizzing, so you're not gonna be able to hear me talking over it, but I'm just going to slowly add it and I'm gonna check the time um, and it wants to be a minute. Now, Bernier sauce you don't want to hang around with, so you want to make it um, and use it and pour it in to the tarragon. That colour is amazing. So, so delicious. And just mix it through with the tarragon and I will then pop that in a jug to serve. You don't really want to put it in the fridge. You really want to make it fresh. So I'm just going to clear the decks slightly and get Sai to come over and carve our beef. The chips are done and I just pop a piece of kitchen roll down to absorb any excess oil. So, yeah. They are up there, um, like so. I will take the kitchen roll away before serving them. The moment of truth, I've roped Sai in to come and carve. Um, well, slice it up, it's barely carving, isn't it? You're looking a bit scruffy in that, that um, jumper. I've sent him outside to do jobs, haven't I? Yeah, I've been working like a dog all morning. Um, <laughs> I can't really see you very well. Door. Can I lift it up? Well, if I lift... If I lift it up, darling, they're not going to be able to see you, so you're going to have to come. Right, Sorry. Well, here we go, the moment of truth. I suppose if I was asked what would be on my last supper, hopefully this won't be, but um, it would well, be... Well, hopefully this won't be your last supper. Hopefully it won't be my last supper, but um, it would be... Well, actually, it would start with plate fruit de mer, with lots of mayonnaise, longestine oysters, crab rather than lobster. Is crab. mayonnaise your most favourite thing? It's got to be right up there. <laughs> with Bernays, they kind of yeah go together, don't they? Yeah. Uh, and then followed by some rare beef, frit. Look at that, that's superb. Frit and the Bernays sauce, green salad. I didn't need any veg with it; just a nice salad would be good. Um, and um, and then probably finish off with chocolate mousse. 
I should probably have ate that lot. It probably would be my last. <laughs> it probably would be. Um, I have got a great chocolate mousse recipe that I think I shared with you last year. So again, I will leave that video linked down below because you love that. Now we, as I mentioned earlier, like our beef on the rarer side. So obviously I cooked this for exactly 10 minutes. So if you wanted it slightly more cooked, I'd go for 15 minutes, but I think that is looking really, really delicious. So I am going to serve up. Our Valentine feast is ready. So I'm going to serve the beef on the plate first. Oh, this looks so, so delicious. And obviously if you've got people that prefer it more cooked, less cooked, you can either give them the ends of the meat or you can just cook the meat a little bit more um, as well. Some chips. Our green salad. And I'm just going to dress it. to leave some room for the Bernays sauce, which is my husband's absolute favourite. So I shall pop that over here. And that is our Valentine feast. I hope that you've enjoyed watching how I have created this. And I really hope that um, you look into Piper's Farm because it's a great alternative if you don't have a good local butcher. I hope that you find my Bernays sauce easy to make and wishing you um, very happy eating. And it's a little bit early for Valentine's Day, but when Valentine's Day is here, a happy Valentine's Day to you all. So darling, what's your verdict on on um, your your feast that you have just enjoyed? Well, well, this is very much my language. This is my world. <laughs> um, I have to say, um, I thought the Piper's uh, beef was absolutely delicious. It was really good. Um, it really was so good. good. Um, you know, it's a, you know, it's just a, a wonderful product and a, and a great story. Um, the reason why Sai is looking over that way is because he's book. looking yeah, at the looking cookbook, book. which you kindly gave me for Christmas. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 th I think that was really exceptionally good beef. Um, We've had a few things from them in the past too, mm, haven't we? Mm. Um, which we thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. Which um, is excellent. And what did you think of the Bernays? Well, I just said to Charlie, which is why she brought me back on camera <laughs> as well, is that the Bernays was as good as many, many French restaurants I've been to over the years. Okay. Brasseries in Paris and whatever. Um, and um, it was really delicious, actually. Thank you. It It's... It's easy to do, but you have to kind of serve it immediately. And you can whisk it by hand, but you kind of get arm ache. So it's, I find it easier to do in the Magi Mix. You can do it with a hand blender, but you're blending and you're pouring. And really you need a third hand to hold um, you know, the, the pot that it's in. So if you've got a Kenwood, that is the easiest way to do it. But um, thank you for, for the, the debrief, for, darling. Yeah, and the other thing for me is that I, I actually just like to keep it quite simple. So you've got a lot going on with the Bernays. You've got a delicious piece of beef. And for me, I, I just like the, the green salad, you know, quite simple, mm. um, nice clean sort of um, flavours to it. And, it. and it just kind of all works really well. Yeah, thank you. Well, I hope that you enjoy recreating um, your your favourite meal. Yeah. <laughs> the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope.